All right, so I'm actually going to do this a little bit differently than I had originally planned. Um, this problem is sort of stated weird. Prove that there exist real numbers which are not algebraic. Um, well, there are uncountably many real numbers and countably many algebraic numbers. So just from that, you can sort of immediately imagine that, well, there must be uncountably many real numbers which are not algebraic because otherwise you would have the reals being comprised of two countable sets which would make it countable which it's not okay so how are we going to do this um because i'm doing this on the fly there's a chance that i might use contradiction in a way that i might not need to but we'll see how it goes um so let A be the set of real algebraic numbers. So this is this this is the intersection of the set of algebraic numbers with the real numbers. Okay. And let n b r and we remove a so then n is the set of non-algebraic real numbers um so clearly r is the union of a and n Because n is r and you remove a, and so if you take r, remove a, and then you add a back in, then you just get r. Okay. So r equals a union n. Um, since the algebraic numbers are countable, or there's countably many algebraic numbers. So is the set A, because A here is a subset of algebraic numbers, and a subset of a countable set is countable. It's at most countable. Well, countable, typically when you say countable, you allow for things to be finite as well because it makes things a lot easier. Because typically, in, in, a, in a lot of these um, types of proofs, um, the difference between finite and countable isn't that great. It's really the uncountable, where um, in, in these types of proofs, um, you sort of treat things which are finite and countable similarly. But yeah, so... Since the algebraic numbers are countable, so is A. Okay. Um, if N is countable, then so is A union N. Because if you take a countable, if you take the union of, yeah, countable union of countable sets is countable. So, in particular, taking the union of A with N, so if N is countable, then so is A U N, um, but A union N, which is R, um, we know that R is not, or here, we'll say that R is uncountable, and hence N is uncountable. Okay, and that's, that finishes the proof. And actually, this actually um, is interesting 
Because remember what I said before where I said I was going to be going through this quickly and so I wasn't entirely sure that I was going to be able to guarantee not using um, proof by contradiction when I didn't need to. This is actually a perfect example of how you can get around doing a proof by contradiction. What I was initially thinking of doing was saying um, assume for contradiction that n is countable then a union n equals r is countable. This contradicts the fact that r is uncountable and therefore um, it cannot be the case that n is countable. Um, so I get, let's see, or maybe um, here, let, let, let's, let's do it this way. If E is countable, then so is E union F. And we know that R equals So if E and F are countable, then so is E union F. We know that R equals A union N is uncountable and so um, A and N are not both countable. A is countable and hence n must be uncountable. Okay, so what have I done? So e, if, e, if the sets E and F are countable, then so is the set E union F. And so what we do here is Instead of doing a contradiction argument, we do a contrapositive argument. And this is usually how you get around doing a proof by contradiction. If, okay, so if E and F are countable, then so is E union F. We know that R, which can be written as A union N, is uncountable. And so we're basically doing, the contrapositive of this says that if E union F is not countable, then it is not the case that E and F are both countable. So using, say, E equals A and F equals N, then um, A union, then the fact that A union N is uncountable implies that E, that it is, it implies that it is not the case that both A and N are countable, which means that one of them has to be uncountable. A is countable, as we've proven already, and so N must be uncountable. And this finishes the proof, and it does so without using contradiction.